Hello and welcome back to yet another GCSE revision lesson. Now what I wanted to do within this lesson is to show you all the context, theme and character quotes to remember when it comes to an inspector call. So let's say you have maybe not been the best student throughout this year, your exams are fast approaching and you're thinking, oh, actually, um, what quotes do I need to remember? What context points do I need to remember? Then you're gonna have it all here. But equally, if you've been the model student, right, you've got all of these notes, all of these things that you have really prepared, but maybe you're drowning in information. What this video is going to be really useful for is to show you when you take a step back, here are the most essential context, theme and quotes to remember if you forget everything during your exam when you're sitting uh, for an inspector calls, okay? And this is also, by the way, useful regardless of your syllabus, okay? This is just basically related to the play itself. However, if you're sitting AQA, IGCSE, Edexcel, this is still useful and equally relevant. Let's begin by talking about the top five context points to remember when it comes to an inspector calls. If you forget everything else, remember these five context points. Number one, remember that Priestley was a socialist. He wrote this play to criticize the capitalist Edwardian system at the time. The second context point to remember is the lack of rights women had during this time. This cuts across class boundaries, both upper middle class, upper class women had also just as few rights as working class women, okay? They needed the protection of marriage of a husband to guarantee some kind of stability for them. Also, women at this time did not get equal pay, okay? Remember that women only received the right to vote in 1918. So Priestley is also criticizing this through using all of the female characters in the play to illustrate this lack of rights that women had. The third context point to remember is that Edwardian England, so when this play is set is the Edwardian era, it was a time of deep class divisions, okay? Priestley wanted to highlight how a few upper um, class and also upper middle class people had disproportionate and vast power which they used to exploit the working classes. The next context point, the fourth context point is this prevailing view and this idea of the undeserving poor. This is the idea that a lot of upper class people held that the poor somehow were undeserving of aid and charity because they somehow were maybe immoral and they put themselves in that position where they were in poverty and in need. They saw them as the undeserving poor, okay? And the fifth and final context point to remember is that this play is set just before the start of World War I. It's set in 1912 and World War I begins in 1914 and it ends in 1918, okay? This play was trying to highlight that, you know, Edwardian society had the seeds of instability which inevitably led to the First World War breaking out. Those are the main context points. If you forget everything with context, make sure you just literally remember those, okay? Those five context points. Let's now move on to themes. In terms of themes, these are the four main themes to remember for an inspector called. Starting off with class, this idea that Precy is trying to illustrate, especially through the sympathetic characters of both Eva and Daisy Smith, the deep class divisions that existed in Edwardian England, and how people like Mr. Burling abuse the power. Equally, of course, all the Burlings abuse their power and they abuse the privilege as part of the upper middle class society, but of course also Gerald being part of upper class uh, Edwardian England, he also abused his power, okay? So Priestley wants to illustrate this through the theme of class. The second theme is the theme of age. Remember that Priestley was very pessimistic when he considered the older generation, okay? Priestley felt that change, social change towards equality was actually gonna be driven by the younger generation. That's why by the end of the play, there's a split, there's this divide between Mr. and Mrs. Berling who don't want to see any change. They rigidly stick to the old values, okay? And they want society to stay the same versus Eric and Sheila who want to change. They symbolize the young generation who are most likely to inspire change. The third theme is to do with social responsibility. Remember, one of the core messages of an inspector calls is Priestley wanted to illustrate, especially to his wealthier viewers, okay, his wealthier people in the audience, that they had a duty. It was a duty. It wasn't a choice. It was their social responsibility and their duty to use their money and their resources to help the poor, okay, to pay them more equally, to also help them with charities and so on. It was their social responsibility, not a choice, a duty. The fourth Key theme to remember is that of gender. Again, remember that Priestley wanted to use the female characters 
Sheila, Mrs. Burling, Daisy and Eva to illustrate the deep divisions and the lack of power that existed when it came to women who were abused and mistreated versus men, okay? Remember, even, you know, the most obvious victim is Eva and Daisy um, Renton, okay? So she is mistreated or they are mistreated, both by Eric, Gerald and so on. However, don't forget that even Sheila Burling, who isn't part of the same class, she's not working class, okay? She's upper middle class, but actually she's also mistreated by Gerald Croft, okay? So, of course, this theme is used by Preci to criticize the mistreatment of women and the lack of power that they had. It overlaps really nicely with this context point relating to women's rights. That's all you need to remember when it comes to themes and, of course, context. But let's now look at key quotations. If you forget everything, if you're really hazy, you're like, okay, I literally don't know where to start when memorizing quotations. These are the three main quotations per character for all the main characters in the play. And I'm gonna go in the order with which Inspector Gore questions each member of the Berling family. He starts off with Mr. Berling, then he moves on to Sheila, then he moves on to Gerald Croft, then Mrs. Berling and Eric Berling, okay? He literally questions them in that order. So I'm going to show you the quotations, the three top quotations to remember for each character, taken from the beginning, middle and end, okay? The first quotation to remember when it comes to Mr. Berling's character is when he says the Titanic ellipsis unsinkable, okay? So when he's saying this, this use of hyperbole here, what this is illustrating is how out of touch he is with society. He's completely out of touch. We would call him myopic, okay? Obviously, what this is illustrating is Mr. Berling literally had no clue. He had these rose-tinted glasses and he didn't realize all the unhappiness in the working classes. The second quotation for Mr. Berling's character is when he says, it's my duty to keep labor costs down and he calls Eva labor. He dehumanizes her. Again, what this is illustrating is how a lot of businessmen at the time mistreated and abused and also exploited the workers. The third and final quotation to remember for Mr. Berling's character is at the end when he can see that Sheila and uh, Eric want to change. He mocks them. He shows that he doesn't want to see any form of change because he mocks them and says the famous younger generation who know it all. Okay. What well, this is illustrating is Mr. Berling does not want to change and he refuses to change even by the end of the play. The second obviously key character is Sheila Berling. The first quotation to remember for her character is when she criticizes her father. She says, these girls aren't cheap labor. We can see here that she actually, she is quite humane, okay? So even if she's a little bit selfish, even at the beginning, she's, you know, a little bit airheaded. Actually, we can see that she sympathizes even from the start with the issues faced by working class women. The second quotation, of course, is once she realizes the role she played in Eva's death after she had a fight in Millwoods, she actually openly admits, I started it. That's really important because it's illustrating that she takes social responsibility. The third and final quotation is um, when she tells her family, there's nothing to be sorry for, nothing to learn. Here we can see that she is utterly disgusted at the behavior of Gerald as well as Mr. and Mrs. Berling at the fact that they are celebrating. They're so happy. Oh, the inspector doesn't exist. We can get away with it scot-free. Whilst she says, no, I want to change my attitude and my approach to working class people. The next character is of course, Gerald Croft. He's the one that has the affair with Daisy Renton, okay? And obviously Daisy actually quite likes him. Now the first quotation which illustrates that Gerald is actually a very duplicitous character and he kind of sees himself as above other people and especially when even he's talking to the inspector, he says, we're respectable citizens and not criminals. Now here, this is deeply ironic because actually the way he treated women like Daisy, we could classify it as immoral and even perhaps criminal, okay? So this is obviously very deeply ironic. The second quotation relating to Gerald's character is when he admits he actually really liked the power that he had over Daisy when she was his mistress because he says that he became the most important person in her life. He really liked the power that he wielded over her before he just threw her away. The final quotation which shows that Gerald actually is totally remorseless by the end of the play is when he asks, after he goes off, finds out that the inspector is not real, he comes back and then Sheila and Eric are saying, no, 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 but you know, we still need to change. And he says, you know, what girl? Um, and then he mentions, four or five different girls. Here we can see Gerald is incredibly dismissive. He doesn't really care about uh, Daisy Renton and the issues that she faced. All he cares about is protecting himself, so he's quite a hypocrite. The next character, of course, is Mrs. Burling. And again, she is quite hypocritical. Remember when you're writing about Mrs. Burling, if you decide to talk about her as a character, she is far more loyal to her class than her gender. This is illustrated firstly when she says and calls women like Daisy, 
girls of that class. This, even the fact that she uses this diminutive noun girls shows that she looks down on women like Daisy. She sees them as somehow immoral and somehow being part of the undeserving poor, the immoral individuals. The next quotation related to Mrs. Benning's character is when she justifies refusing help to Daisy as she'd impertinently made use of our name. We can see here that she wants to always distance herself from working class women. The third quotation with Mrs. Benning's character is at the end of the play, when she criticizes Sheila and Eric for wanting to change because she says, you might be wanting to help him instead of us. She uses this pronoun us to illustrate that she sees the inspector and working class people as outsiders. The next character, of course, is Eric Berling, who at the beginning is described as half shy and half assertive. I think that's really interesting in kind of really encapsulating his character, how he's very withdrawn, but also very secretive. The next quote relating to Eric's character is when he admits that he raped Daisy. And he even says, I don't remember, ellipsis, that's the hellish thing, okay? What this illustrates is how intensely selfish he was. However, the final quotation which shows that he changed was when he says, you lot may be letting yourselves out nicely, but I can't. And his use of, um, when he says you lot, which is basically in formal language, here we can even see through his language that he's actually a bit of an outsider, okay? He doesn't speak as proper and as posh as someone like Gerald Croft. Already we can see he's an outsider, but also he thinks like an outsider, meaning he can maybe see things from the inspector's perspective. The final quotations to remember, of course, relate to Inspector Gould's character. When he first says a young woman died, ellipsis, she was in great agony. Remember that he serves as a mouthpiece for women like Eva Smith and Daisy Renton. This is what illustrate. This is what you can talk about that's illustrated in this quotation. The next quotation relating to Inspector Gould is when he tells Mr. Burling, public men, ellipsis, have responsibilities. Again, this is part of Precy's message about people who have lots of power having a social responsibility, a duty to help the poor. And the third and final quotation relating to Inspector Gould's character, this is now the message that he wants to impart, not only to the Burlings, but to us as the audience. He says the millions and millions and millions of Eva Smiths and John Smiths, they represent, you know, the poor people out there that really need our help and it's our duty to help them out, okay? So if you find yourself in a position where you're really, really stuck, maybe you're drowning in notes, or maybe you have no notes related to Inspector Calls, these are all the main context, theme, and quotations that you need to remember for the final exam. And guys, I have literally created a free um, PDF file which you can download kind of having all of this mind map summarized, okay? So if you wanted to have something that's really nifty and easy to use, literally just click on the download load link and you can get it for free, okay? So guys, thank you so much for watching and I hope you found this useful.